Future trends, deep insights, industry leaders. This is the iGaming Next podcast with your host, Michael Peterson. This podcast is brought to you by Pragmatic Solutions, the leading iGaming PAM platform with a modular approach, including many benefits like a fast, secure, and scalable API-based platform integrated with all major third-party products and services. Make sure you head over to Pragmatic Solutions and join our smart thinking. Work smarter, not harder. Fast Track frees up time for CRM teams to be more creative, innovative, and analytical. Welcome to the future of CRM. Find out more at FastTrack-Solutions.com. This podcast is brought to you by YOLO Group, bringing next-level innovation to the worlds of gaming, fintech, blockchain, and more. To find out more, visit YOLO.com. Hey everyone, hope you're doing great. Today in the iGaming Next marketing podcast, we are talking to Alex Tchaikovsky and we're going to go a little bit old school, yet in a very modern and techy kind of way. Alex has been in the industry for more than two decades, is based somewhere in Asia, he doesn't want to say where. Uh, you could definitely classify him as a, as a gray market kind of guy. Um, uh, and, but he has so many stories to tell. He has so many insights. Uh, he has, uh, he's sharing with us what he calls the five P's of new market entry, which I think anyone can find value from. And we also deep dive a little bit more into live streaming, Twitch and, uh, and all the fun stuff. So have a listen to this podcast. I hope you find some good value. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to another episode of the iGaming Next marketing podcast. Today, I have a fantastic and very special guest with me, uh, Mr. Alex Tchaikowski. Did I pronounce that correctly, Alex? Correct. Absolutely. Welcome to the show. How are you doing today? Thank you, Michael. I'm doing great. Thanks so much. Very good. And you're you're somewhere in Asia. Uh, you told me so. Somewhere in Asia. Somewhere in <laughs> somewhere in Asia. Digital nomad. How how is the how's the weather where you are right now? Uh, it's it actually it was, today was fantastic. No rain. Warm, comfortable. I mean, I spent uh, Christmas in the UK where I froze my ass off. Yeah. Uh, this is 18 plus, right? We can swear. Um, yeah, exactly. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it's great to be back in Asia. Very good, very good, fantastic. And for our listeners who also watch the the video version, uh, maybe we should just describe it a little bit, um, uh, Alex. Here, so you're sitting uh, in front of a green screen, uh, wearing a very very nice gold suit. How do you? <laughs> how would you describe it? I yourself? wish I had the gold suit. I'd fucking cash it in already. <laughs> but um, no, it's uh, it's part of my character for Superstar Players Live, which is a live stream real money slot show that I do on YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, and at superstarplayers.com. Yeah. And, and actually uh, soon to be on a new streaming service called Trovo. But um, so I can multi-stream to all those. So I just do one show and boom, it goes on out to all those platforms. Yeah. And uh, it's it's I've been something I've been doing for six months. You know, after twenty years of being in the business, I never really, really, really ate my own cookie, my own, our own product. I play blackjack, I play roulette, I play back rat. You know, um, uh, but I, slots, you know, which is ninety percent of our revenue, I never really got into. And so the last six months, I've play, I've streamed over three hundred hours. I played over two hundred twenty games. And I bet close to three million dollars. Um, I mind you, it turns over. So I didn't spend $3 million. Yeah. Right. But, but it's, yeah, it was, but you bet 20, it. 30, um, and so, yeah, so it's been, it's been a really, really great experience. And, and I have people coming in and chatting with me and we talk about music and I teach some foreign languages and we talk about the games. We talk about volatility. We talk about RTP and, you know, these are people that have been playing for 20 years and no online casino wants to teach them about volatility. Yeah. What the fuck is that? <laughs> you know? So, so we're fixing that, you know? We're, yeah. The educated consumer is your best customer. 
Yeah. And that's never more true than in the casino space. Yeah, no, that's true. I, I love uh, the eating eating your own cookies uh, concept, Alex. I think that's that's so great. And you, you learn so much. And it's surprising how many people are not playing themselves, but still has worked in the industry for a decade plus, right? So, Well, I, 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 I did for 20 years. You know, I, yeah. did, I, I played the horse race, I, you know, this and that. But I never really knew... I thought I knew what it was like to be in the shoes of my players. Yeah. But now I know what it's like to be in the shoes of my players. Yeah. I took ten thousand dollars and ramped it up to eighty five thousand and dropped that down to sixty three cents. Yeah. You Intentionally. Know? Yeah. But a lot of learnings along the way. Yeah. And a lot of you know two hundred twenty games and or more than that now probably. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's a really really great experience and and luckily I've 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 made the time to do it. So. You know, it's been a, it's been a real eye opener, really. Once you have your own money on the line, you have to learn the game, right? So it, it's a it's yeah, a different different ball game. Do. I mean, I have some catchphrases. Change yeah. something, change your luck is one of mine. Yeah. Um. You know, I'm, if I'm I'm not seeing any luck, you know, I'll, I'll I'll drop my bet, raise my bet, you know, or go yeah. to auto spins. I know these things don't make a difference in the math. Yeah. You know, theoretically, they don't make any difference at all. But casino players are massively superstitious. Yeah. Uh, including myself. Yeah. And so I have my favorite games that, 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 oh shit, I'm down. I got to get back up. I'll go to play this game now, you know? Yeah. Uh, and, um, and, but the purpose of the show is to show off games. And so I, I hate getting stuck on, you know, and I hate to bore my viewers yeah. you know, watching, oh, here's Alex playing floating dragons for the 400th time or yeah. empty the bank by a pragmatic play or, yeah. or, you know, any, any other, other, cause I have favorites. You have favorites. Of course. You know, they have good features. They have good math. They are graphics, good sounds. And and they pay, you know, that yeah. makes, it, makes it your favorite. Yeah, yeah. So, no, um, that's, but yeah, that, I, I try to mix it up. That's that's great. And for the audience at home, uh, uh, that's that's you know, I'm so happy we're going to be talking about this, Alex. This is very much a, a passion of mine as well as you know, uh, video live streaming, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But before we get to that, um, uh, it would be fantastic, Alex, if you could give us uh, a brief uh, journey through your your gaming uh, career uh, spanning. Two decades, right? I mean, you've been here for 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 a while, so it'll two be decades this month, actually. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's, been a, it's been weird. It's been weird. You know, in uh, 2002, I launched the first Isle of Man um, regulated uh, site, uh, Casino Atlantis, and that lasted like a year, yeah, something like that. Yeah. Um, it was owned by a land base, and they were scared that they could be compromised and lose their lucrative land base contracts. So, um, got out of that, and then. Um, well, I went with Bet on uh, Bet Internet up in the also in the Isle of Man, and uh, joined them for a while before I got recruited by Sporting Bet PLC at the time, mm -hmm. and um, took over their Americas region and from Costa Rica, and turned Sportsbook.com you know from from a you know a solid performer to a top performer. Mm -hmm. uh, we were twice awarded the uh, e gaming Sportsbook of the Year um, in 2006 and 2007, or. Yeah, I think it was 2006, 2007, mm -hmm. something like that. Because we just kept on doing stuff. You know, we had we had a magazine, we had an annual uh, a calendar book that came out. We had a uh, show on Court TV because I've always been into, into videos. Uh, we were the first first sports book with a celebrity video on the site that talks. You know, what that welcomes to the site, starring Brooke Burke, which your American viewers might remember. Yeah. Um, I mean, and, and we were the first one to do a multi-million dollar deal with Mazda and the only sports book that I know that's ever done a deal with a major um, uh, car manufacturer yeah. did a deal, a multi-million dollar deal with, with uh, Mazda Motorsports yeah. over there. When was, the, when was uh, that? What, what, yeah. year, what year was that, Alex, roughly? Just to that go. was 2007, 2008. 2007, 2008. Okay. Back in the golden days. The golden days. <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. And uh, so that oh, was. I mean, the states are seeing golden days now, but yeah. hey, yeah. you know, it's uh, it all goes around, comes around. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so uh, and then after sporting, so then I started my own thing, Buzzluck uh, out of Malta, and Buzzluck was the first online casino in 2008 that did uh, that had a 3D lobby that you would navigate through, and it had video people in it that you click on, and there was a Russian whore, the drunk American businessman, there was. A, a Tom Cruise impersonator. There was an Elvis impersonator. There was a beautiful concierge girl. And you click on these people and they'd say different things to you. And we'd hide bonuses and surprises in the lobby. And, and you move through it like you're playing Doom or, you know, another mm -hmm. uh, first person shooter game. Yeah. And, um, and, and, and then every weekend we wanted to do it every day, but the, uh, it, the production was so hard that uh, every weekend we stream a live show that we call the live internet party at Buzzluck. 
Mm -hmm. And, um, and it was great fun. So and this was 2008, 2009. Um, we're doing internet streaming where, you know, most people are still on a fucking dial up or something. Yeah, but let, let's let's pause there for a second. Uh, so the mindset you must have had at that time is also that it's, you know, just playing slots is too boring and there needs to be another layer in terms of entertainment and sort of, you know, sort of, or, you know, take us through what, what, what was your thinking at that point? Because this was like crazy early. Like this is like 10 years before anyone else was starting to think like that, uh, Alex. So, well, well, I mean, I, to be honest, I ripped a page out of Steve Wynn's handbook. Okay. So Steve Wynn was the first, uh, in Vegas was the first person to set up on the strip with the Mirage. Yeah. And he set up this groovy building, jungle themes, you know, white tigers, dolphins, and outside there's a volcano that erupts every hour, every half hour or whatever. Right? Yeah. And so, and why is he doing that? Well, he's competing with guys down in Fremont because after, at the end of the day, the blackjack, the slots, they're all the same everywhere you go. Yeah. What is the, what's the, what's the player experience above and beyond that? So you're sitting there at, at, at Mirage and go, and the dealer says, Oh dude, the volcano's going to go off. Why didn't you go check it out? Oh, I checked it out last hour. Okay, fine. Oh no. Okay. I'll go check it out. Sure. It's cool. I'll save your spot. I'll just leave your chips here. They're safe. Boom. Off you go. Volcano goes off. Cool experience, you know. Yeah, it's the kind of thing you can only get in Vegas. Yeah, and so I really wanted to be a super casino like that with Buzz Luck, where we had experience above and beyond what you get on the floor. Yeah, because it's a differentiator. You know, there's a there's there was a thousand online casinos back in the day. Now there's a million online casinos, and uh, how do you differentiate? And, yeah. and for me, that entertainment component, like the like Steve Wynn, yeah, um, who Mirage was funded by junk bonds uh, in the '80s, mm. and and to the tune of like, I think it's $3 billion. I'm not sure. Someone wow. out there, one of you trolls will correct me on that. But it was funded <laughs> by Junk Bonds. Yeah. And it was, and everyone's like shaking their heads like, Steve, you're so fucked. Yeah. And, um, and, and boom, like in eight months and trolls fix me. Yeah. Uh, eight months, nine months, 12 months, whatever. It's a very short period of time. Yeah. Bonds paid off, profitable. Yeah. Out you go. Wow. Uh, so I really wanted to follow his example. Although I don't sexually harass my staff. <laughs> what is it they he, say? He, he, uh, uh, you know, you, know, you what, get accused of this shit and you get thrown out. And, <laughs> what is it they say in Las Vegas? Never sell gambling, right? It's, uh, it, 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 as in it's, no, what, are, what's, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Ah, yeah, yeah, that one, that one too. But I think there is a lot of, yeah. uh, sort of, you know, don't, don't lead with the gambling. The gambling is, you know, you, you lead with the entertainment, you lead with the, with the, with the guest experience. Um, and then you, uh, you know, you just happen to have to walk through the casino in order to go from your hotel room to, to the restaurant or to, to, to the arena, or whatever you're doing there. Right. But you don't. Well, it's kind of, it's kind of like that. It's, you know, and I said this to, um, um, uh, a technical friend of mine a couple of years ago, he said, I said, I don't try to make people gamble. Yeah. People are going to gamble. Yeah. You know, and I just want them to gamble with me because I give a fuck about them. I'm going to take yeah. care of them. Yeah. I'm going to see that they get paid. Yeah. I'm going to see that they have a fair time. I'm going to see that the rules are followed. I'm going to see that, you know, everything's safe and clean and, yeah. and fine. Yeah. Um, and, and, and so far as I can. But, yeah. um, you know, that's so, so yeah, you're, you're, you're going to gamble and that's a, you're going to gamble, you're going to drink, you're going to smoke, you're going to drive fast, you're going to yeah. drive a Ford Pinto, you're going to drive yeah. a, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, you know, it, there are inherent dangers in all these things. You're going to vote for a politician. Good luck. Yeah. Um, but, but the, but the thing is that if you're going to gamble, I'd rather you gamble with me because, Hey, you know, you take I, care I may not be your yeah. best friend, but I'm yeah. not going to fuck you over. Yeah. I'm going to take care of you because I want to, I want your, I want to see that revenue for the rest of your life. Yeah. And that's why when people talk about responsible gambling and, you know, like, I don't want your house payment. I don't yeah. want your kids milk money, man. Yeah. Yeah. I want you to have a good time yeah. and come back and have a good time again, yeah. you know, tomorrow or next week or whenever, yeah. you know, that's, that's responsible gambling is actually good for the business model. Absolutely. Okay, great. So back to the story. Alex, so after Sporting Bed and, and Bus Lock, so what, what, uh, what, where, uh, where, where did bed, the journey? Lock, uh, I bounced around a little bit. What did I do? Oh, I went, oh yeah, I went to Panama. I did bet online, a small, uh, a, then like, you know, number 25, 30 on the list. They only took, um, they only took, uh, uh, uh money gram and, and uh, Western union and MoneyGram yeah. that were their only forms of payment. And I got there and I said, you know, guys, <laughs> it's Visa and MasterCard. And luckily, and like, you know, like Calvin air, he listens, he listens to people. I, yeah, you, know, you, you think think what you wanted the man, but at least he listens to people. He yeah. got some brand new guys on. He listened to them, and off he went. Yeah. So this this guy listened to me as well, 
And so we hired a, a really, really great guy to run around the world and get us processors for American credit cards. Yeah. And, um, and, 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 and that alone was a, a huge advantage to us. Um, and then the same guy came up to me and said, look, I'm thinking about writing a check for a million dollars for a poker network. And I've, I had launched by that time I had launched two poker networks previously. Mm -hmm. And, um, and he said, how soon will I get the money back? And I said, well, I, you know, uh, 12 months, you know, and six months later with that kind of processing power, he had the money back in six months. Okay. Uh, so, I mean, he's, He's sitting on the beach some now, somewhere now in Costa Rica, and I'm still fucking sitting in front of a camera, <laughs> streaming and trying to make a buck. <laughs> right. So yeah, bet online, and then or then I went to work back to the right lane markets, which I never thought I'd be allowed back in. Okay, um, but I was. So I worked for the brilliant Per Wiederstrom, who just stepped down as chairman and CEO of Fortune Entertainment Group yeah. in Czech Republic, and he just. He said he put dynamite under that thing and blew it up yeah. like crazy. He did an amazing job. I spent two years working for him for Gala Bingo, yeah. another also ran brand that we brought back up to the top. Um, we moved him over to Playtech. We went on TV. We got celebrities like Peter Andre and Ant and Deck and stuff like that. And I mean, back then, this is 2012, 2013. Those those were magic bullets. Yeah, as I've always said, there is no magic bullet. You've got to do a hundred little things right to get it to make it happen in this in this industry. Um, and there are no magic bullets, but TV advertising in the early 2010s yeah. uh, in the UK was a magic bullet for sure. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. And today... Yeah, and then what did I do? Then I screwed around some more and got hooked up with some dodgy guys and helped them rebrand and new brands and all that kind of stuff. And uh, yeah, then I've got, I, you know, I, I've lived in every jurisdiction. I used to say that I've lived in every jurisdiction for the, except for the Europe, except for the Phil Philippines. Uh, I think we lost. Like, cool. uh, Set me up. Yeah. And so I moved to the Philippines and did that for a little bit and uh, spent a little bit of time in China and then uh, uh, came down here to s uh, other parts of South Southeast Asia. Yeah. Um, and uh, did some shit and, and was encouraged to launch my uh, launch my streamcast show. And, yeah. and that's fun. Yeah. Uh, but course. I'm still consulting with other other companies in the region. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. What a journey. So today, if I'm reading your LinkedIn profile, at least correct, it's, uh, I don't know if the company is called Stealth Mode or if you are in, no, stealth, we're in mode. stealth Mode. You're in Stealth Mode. I get these emails from people <laughs> on LinkedIn saying, hey, I bet we could really help Stealth Mode with your blah, blah. Dude, it's not Stealth Mode. We're in Stealth Mode, right? <laughs> the company is you not know? called Stealth Mode. LinkedIn yeah. says, maybe you know these other people on Stealth Mode. I, yeah. I'm in Stealth Mode. I don't yeah. know anybody. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, which, it, it's, it's, You know, I'm I'm about to embark on a, a completely uh, legalized, legitimate, licensed endeavor, which I'm super super excited about, but can't talk about yet. Yeah. Um. But that's that's what's coming up, and that's going to be really really fun, and mm -hmm. I look forward to it. Um. But huh. uh. But yeah. Otherwise, you know, it, you know, you're, you're working in gray markets. You're working in black markets. Um. And I prefer working gray markets and black markets, but. Man, it's so easy doing white markets. You know, I, yeah, you're constrained. Yeah, the regulators hold you. You know, so long as the regulations are stupid, like they are in Germany, like they're becoming in the UK. Um, you know, with with you know, max a thousand dollars a month, a thousand pounds a month, thousand yeah. euros a month, yeah. maximum bet of one euro, maximum bet of one quid. I mean, all the regulators are doing are driving the players off to off to gray and black market operators yeah, yeah. with these stupid regulations. They're not protecting a goddamn single person, not one yeah, person. Yeah. Are they going to help because they're stupid regulations? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. Good luck. Good luck in those markets. So, so Hopefully just, my regulated market is going to be a lot more mellow. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so if I just take a step back, uh, Alex, uh, so it, first of all, at least where I'm sitting here in Malta, it's, uh, you know, you know all, all all the talk is is about you know uh, responsible gaming uh, uh highly regulated markets uh, you know it's very sort of uh, politically correct and 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 well considered and 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 playing the long game so to speak so it's 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 very refreshing to to hear your story as well sort of uh, you know having spent a, a lot of time in industry and a lot of a lot of time in in asia you know gray markets etc and you're you're absolutely fine to have that conversation and open about that. So how, how like, 
what's your what's your um, like how would you describe yourself uh t t today and and uh, and 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 how come you're so open and and sort of proactive around well, having know, that conversation at ice and 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 uh the i gave me super show and and i you know, I, I publish pretty regularly you know and I, yeah. and i try to put numbers up and i and i calmed down the last four or five years because I actually wasn't seeing the ROI. You know, yeah. I, I'm building my brand. Great. Great. Yeah. But you know, it's like, you know, one time I found myself in between gigs and I'm like, Hey guys, come on. You, you, you know me. Come on. Come yeah. on. Bring it on. Yeah. And, and, oh no, 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 no. Yeah. I'm like, all right, well, fuck this. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, yeah. So I've calmed down on that, but I am, I am beginning to publish again. And I'm writing uh, on LinkedIn regularly about, my insights so you can follow me or like me or, yeah. or eat me on LinkedIn, whatever. Yeah. But, um, and you're more than welcome. Um, and I, and I say stupid stuff and I say smart stuff and you can figure out what it is and what you resonate to. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, even when I was, you know, doing business in the States out of Costa Rica, yeah. you know, I stood in front of a, stood in front of a panel of, at the, at the Harvard Alumni Club in New York, mm -hmm. you know, and talking about what we're doing. I was on ESPN. Mm -hmm. um, we're talking about what we're doing. It's supposed to come. I had a, and, and uh, right before kickoff season for NFL in 2007, I had a billboard on the strip in Las Vegas mm -hmm. with a hundred thousand pounds, a hundred thousand dollars cash in a plastic box on the billboard. <laughs> um, but, um, Okay. Yeah, and I was supposedly on the DOJ watch list, blah blah, you know. Yeah. But then Sporting Bet got forget forgiven. I mean, you look at you look at guys that were head of eight 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 back in the day, you know, they're now running casinos in the States, you know, GG Levi is living down in the States. That was casino on net, you know. Yeah. These are the guys that were spamming you at breakfast in nineteen ninety nine. You know, yeah. you couldn't sit down, you open your box of cereal and there's a casino on net C D ROM or 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 floppy disk uh, back in the day. I mean, <laughs> there couldn't have been worse per perpetrators yeah. you know, in violation of the laws. And yeah, they are off scot free. So yeah, yeah. And I have no money. So yeah. you know, and that's all they're really interested in, anyways, is getting the money. And I don't have any, so we're fine. <laughs> so, so if you had uh, if you had to take a step back and look at sort of the industry overall, and um, you're seeing um, uh, a, a new uh, group of entrepreneurs or or an entrepreneur starting an operator business today, uh, w would you advise them to go down the regulated market route or the more uh, gray gray market route, and and why? Well, interesting question, Michael. As usual, um, you always do this to your guests. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Just putting on the um, spot here. Feel free to say know, I don't want to answer that. Is paying a thousand dollars for on their, their CPA basis is Masamenos a thousand dollars a head yeah. to get people in. Yeah. And um, and are they going to see value from that? Well, you know, maybe in the long run. Mm. Um, do the founders care? No, they've all cashed out already. Mm. Or, or are in the process of doing so. Mm. So you know, it's it, it's 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 not a sustainable business, really, um, at that at that level of CPA. But mm. you know, like any any new market, you know, it's like dot coms were in the nineties. It's like NFTs and crypto are now. Mm -hmm. You know, you you get this big excitement, and then it, everything crashes, and then the real players come to emerge, and 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 they make money in the long term. Yeah, you know, like like Amazon's done a really great job of doing it. Yeah. Um, and, and all the other wannabe Amazons are gone. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I would, I tell when I talk to people that say, Oh, we want to, we want to work with you. I'm like, great. You know, you want to launch a brand. Okay. What are you going to go after? Curse license, go after, you know, wherever you can. Okay. You got six to 10 million to lose over the next 18 months. Mm -hmm. And if the answer is no, I'm like, well then like, don't even talk to me because that's what it takes. Yeah. You need money. Yeah. To, to play in this game. Yeah. Um, in regulated markets, you need money to play yeah. in the game. Yeah. There's, there, there are some spaces in the crypto space where some guys coming out with money with some interesting games that mm -hmm. are not slot games, but they're, you know, random games of chance based on a random number generator, yeah. generator and stuff like that. And there's some, there's certainly some opportunities there. This whole pay to earn space is really interesting. I'm just beginning to get my head around it. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, the access infinity and stuff. Um, you know, and I'm an, I'm an old dog. It takes me a while to learn the tricks, but I will learn them. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, we'll figure out, figure out how to, how to have fun with it. Cause yeah. you know, in, selling innovation to early adopters is, is my favorite gig. Yeah. But, um, yeah, if you, if, if you want to come into iGaming, the answer is don't for the yeah. most part. Yeah. Okay. Uh, micro game, the vice president of micro gaming who I brought into the industry actually back in 2003, 2004, 
Um, he once said to me, oh, yeah, we have a saying that you want to turn a billionaire into a millionaire? Open an online casino. And uh, <laughs> I can tell you firsthand, that's, it's, yeah, it's like that. It's yeah. like that right. until you get up to scale yeah. and get your VIPs in. Yeah. And there's a whole lot of things that have to happen for you to make money in the space for sure. So the days of uh, starting an online casino with, uh, with, with half a million in the bank are, are way over and you need a, a significant wallet if you want to, uh, to yeah, join this you're industry. Gonna, you're just going to, you're going to burn through that. Yeah. You know, yeah. you're going to burn through that. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to have players that come and, and, and just beat you fairly. They yeah. just beat you fairly yeah, yeah. and you have to pay them. Yeah. yeah. You know, you have to pay them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Cool. Very good. So, um, one of the things, uh, the big topics we're going to talk about today uh, is sort of around uh, new market entry. Uh, and yeah. you were telling me during the prep call that, uh, you know, it's not the four P's of marketing. It's the five P's of new market entry, basically, Alex, that, the, that you're, you're, you're leading with here. So uh, please uh, uh, take, take us through that. What's the thinking behind it? Uh, what's the sort of the, the starting point? What, what sort of is it, uh, you know, both towards operators and suppliers or what sort of, you know, what, how, how do people apply this uh, to their own lives? Well, the first P is to get Michael Peterson on your side and get your ass <laughs> on that gaming next. <laughs> Good. So it's a 6P model now. <laughs> yeah, now it's a 6P. I'll have to rewrite it. Good. <laughs> no, seriously, um, you know, people talk to me about, you know, oh, they want to go to Thailand. They want to go to Japan. They want to go to India. They want to go to Germany. I'm like, that's great. That's great, you know. And, um, and, 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 and do you, can you sort these things? So if you're going to go into Thailand, you need sexy baccarat. If you're going to go into Japan, you need pachinko slots. If you're going to go into, uh, India, you need team patty. If you're going to go into North America, you need blackjack. If you're going to go into Europe, you need roulette. I mean, if you don't have the product, mm -hmm. right, the right product for the market, mm -hmm. people will just look at you and go, well, you don't have the game I want. I'll see you later. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go on to the next day. I'll go on mm -hmm. the next site. You know, mm -hmm. um, you, you can there. You know, you can make a go at it if you don't have micro gaming, you don't have play tech, but you have net ends and you have bet soft and a couple of the pragmatic play. Um, pragmatic play is doing a great job actually on uh, as this is quick spin. Uh, quick spins will, will have a big year, but but you know you, you've got to have product that people want and yeah. like. Yeah. So the and product really is the adopted. foundation, they're, they're basically. First people. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Your, your, your biggest players are going to have games that they like, and if you don't have it, they're not going to play with you. They're going to mm -hmm. go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, product is number one. And there's a couple other components to product that I think are really important. Yeah. One is performance of your product. If mm -hmm. your website is slow and sucks or your app slow and sucks, mm -hmm. then, you know, they're not going to stick around. Unless they're in a highly constrained market like Australia or United States, um, they'll put up with a lot more bullshit because there's nowhere else to go because mm -hmm. there are a few suppliers there. Mm -hmm. But if you, but if you're in a competitive market like the rest of the world, um, then uh, then you know if you're not in a black market, black market you can be sloppier. But if you're in a gray or a white market, then yeah. you've got to have performance and you've got to be able to give your players a positive experience. Yeah. Otherwise, they're just done and gone, and that comes down to your product. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just linking this to. Um to another uh, podcast we did recently. Um, uh, we speak a lot about community uh, nowadays and, and, and you know, being able to build communities and foster communities and engage that community. And there's that sort of conversation around, uh, does community trump product? And some people will say, you know, if you have a super strong community, you can get away with a mediocre product. And, uh, and the other uh, team says, um, uh, maybe short term, but long term product that's always going to play out, and and you know product is your foundation, and then community you build as a layer on top of that. W where where do you stand on that, Alex? Do you, do you think uh, like how powerful is community versus product? Well, I know my players pretty well. You know, I have a real passion for my players. I want them to have a positive experience. Hey, they pay for my gold jacket, right? You know, yeah. um, this is not my gold jacket. This is the Godfather's gold jacket. <laughs> uh, he's my character. But, um, uh, but yeah, no, casino players are inherently antisocial people. Yeah. You know, you don't, you don't, I'm sure you go to Vegas and you're sitting there and there's a pretty girl and you hit on her or whatnot, not, but you know, and maybe you'll talk to people and most of the time you're like, dude, will you fucking not take the hit on shit like that? You know, that's, that's the community in Vegas. Um, and online is the same way. You know, when I play live dealer, I'm like, what? I, I play high stakes live dealer blackjack mm -hmm. because if you're sitting on a low stake player, 
the guy's throwing the deck off completely, you know, mm -hmm. and it's all uh, random. And I know how the masks work, mm -hmm. but dude, <laughs> don't split jacks, you know, <laughs> um, it just drives you crazy. So, but, but that said, you know, I've also, I did a survey of players just last year, North American players and, 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 uh, and mm -hmm. players in, uh, in, in Australia and New Zealand. Yeah. I said, would you like a community site that's dedicated to your geo? And overwhelmingly they said, yes. So there's definitely, you know, as, as social media has disrupted the world and become more embedded in our, in our, in our DNA. Yeah. Um, sadly, uh, but 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 hey, it's inevitable. You know, yeah. we're social animals, so yeah. you know it's 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 cool. It's cool. You know, I don't, I don't, I'm, I signed off Facebook years ago, but um, but but you know, they, there's still this quest. There's still this need, and mm -hmm. and you see me posting on LinkedIn, and you know, and I get drunk and I make a bunch of snide comments, and mm -hmm. the next day I'm like, Ooh, shit. <laughs> but <laughs> ah, you know, whatever. Um, it's uh, yeah, it's it's not a job interview, right? Yeah, no, no. <laughs> but exactly. um, yeah, I mean, there's. But at the end of the day, product does trump. Yeah, you know? yeah. If you don't have good product, it you, you know if you don't if pragmatic if pragmatic plays game sucks, mm -hmm. then I'll be the first to tell you, and um, and I'll be the first to tell them. Yeah. And 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 it's just like you know what? Don't play this game. Yeah. Like I tell people, the big thing over the past couple of years has been buy the feature, buy the feature, buy the feature. Yeah. And I'm like, don't buy the feature. Don't buy the feature. Because yeah. eighty times out of twenty, you're gonna lose. You know, yeah. it costs you. A thousand dollars or two hundred dollars to get in, mm -hmm. and you get back fifty percent of that. Mm -hmm. and it's great for the operator, mm -hmm. so I highly recommend pushing it as an operator. Yeah. But um, as a punter, yeah. you know, no, you yeah. man, don't buy the feature. Yeah. Sometimes it wins, but most of the times, no, you're not going to win. Right. So um, it's, but yeah, uh, there's a community element to it. But mm -hmm. I'm, you know, I'm thinking about that that little lady in in uh, Manhattan, Kansas, and she's sitting there in her trailer home in her slippers and she's wearing her house coat and she's, you know, spending $10,000 a month on her husband's, uh, inherit on, the, on her husband's life insurance mm -hmm. payout, mm -hmm. um, keeping herself occupied. So she's not bored and she's waiting for the next tornado. Mm. And I'm, I'm thinking about that guy that was a dry cleaning company in Manhattan and he's in a penthouse and God, I hope it's not the Trump tower, but he's in a penthouse somewhere in Manhattan and he's spending a million dollars a month and he's sitting there in his house coat and his slippers and he's playing the same games as she is, mm. and um, yeah, you know, they, they, these aren't these aren't social butterflies. Yeah, you know, these they're they are you know all generalizations are false, including this one. But um, casino players aren't social butterflies. Mm. They're they're massively superstitious people. Yeah, and uh, God love them, everyone. But a, a lot of these characters are also you know at, by most classified as VIPs or or sort of the you know high high frequency high usage kind of players. If you if you look at sort of the, the let's say the the more entertainment casual driven uh, player segment, so maybe they will spend you know you know they'll play a couple of times a month or whatever, or you know spend like I don't know let, let's say a hundred dollars or a hundred pounds or whatever uh, on, a, on a on a month for that segment, you know do you think community Discord you know whatever Twitch all these kind of things is 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 um uh, as important as product nowadays or is it still product no no, no, no i trumps no, I don't, everything I don't. basically I don't. okay um, and i love discord and you know, i'm just building my superstar players live yeah. community on discord now and yeah. i'm on twitch yeah um and twitch has got a highly interactive audience you know skews way younger than your average north american casino player obviously yeah um because you know that's what you have to think about so you know mm. um you know the, the general gen z millennials you know they've grown up with facebook and and, and now TikTok, and so they're you know they're they, they're used to seeing all this stuff mm -hmm. and um your vip players who contribute 80 to 90 percent of your bottom line right and they mm. pay for 80 to 90 percent of my jacket um and they they're they, they didn't grow up on facebook they they, yeah. they cut their teeth on the internet on yeah. AOL, God save them, you know, yeah. or, yeah. or line one or free or free serve in the UK. Yeah. Um, yeah. To say that, so it's, it's, it's not first nature to them okay. um, to have a community site to participate in that. Right. Um, and they're, they're not social animals to begin with. Mm. They don't, mm. they don't want their face out there. They, mm. They're working, they're playing the gray market. They're worried they're going to get arrested or busted yeah. or worse. 
the tax man will find out they had a big winning. Yeah. That's how, if I have a big winner and I don't want to pay him, I say, that's fine. Send me your details and I'm going to, I'll send you 1099. Yeah. Oh, 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 wait a minute. <laughs> that's not going to happen. Yeah. So yeah. 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 Okay. I don't operate in North American markets currently, by the way. So yeah, I can talk about it. Without <laughs> exactly. restraint. Okay. What else under product or should we move on to the next P? We talked about product. We talked about performance and having a positive experience, which are vital, mm-hmm. vital P's. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't have performance, you're fired. You're gone. Mm-hmm. You're fired. Mm-hmm. Who says that? Yeah. Um, and you don't have you don't have the product. You're fired. Um, you don't have a positive experience. They don't come back to you. Um, the number two thing really is processing, because the way people want to pay for their gaming varies market by market by market ridiculously. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, like in China, they don't have credit cards. They don't have Visa and Mastercard. North America uh, and in the United States is all Visa and Mastercard. In Canada, it's fifty percent Visa and Mastercard and fifty percent Interac, which is a debit card. In Germany, it's ninety percent um, Klarna. You know, it's coming right out of your bank account, mm-hmm. right? It's not. You know, Germans don't like having these lists of things for some reason, and um, and yeah, so you don't. You know, you you've got this. You you've got a market that that uh, is you know very very uh, focused on. On, on cash payments, yeah. Uh, in 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 effect, yeah, which is great too. Yeah. Um. In 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 Thailand, people go to Seven Elevens and make their payments, or go to the bank and make their payments. Mm-hmm. In Japan, it's something else. In India, it's UBO. You know, if you don't have UBO, you're fucked. Yeah. So you've got to pay attention to the processing because people aren't going to change their habits just to play at your lousy casino. Yeah. Where they can go find a game somewhere else that will handle it, right? Yeah. So they want to play. You know, they want to play. Sweet Bonanza, not to plug Pragmatic Play again, but mm. um, uh, they want to play Sweet Bonanza or they want to play something from Play and Go. Um, and, and oh, well, I have to use my Visa Mess card. I don't have one. Mm-hmm. I want to make a bank transfer. Yeah. Oh, I can't. You know, oh, you can use crypto. Yeah, fuck. Mm. Have you tried using crypto? I mean, it's not mainstream. Yeah. The numbers are impressive and amazing. But when you look at 7 billion people in the world and, okay, and, yeah. and maybe we're like at, you know, 200 million people tops are using crypto right now. Mm-hmm. Well, that's 5%, man. We're mm-hmm. just crashing in to early adopter markets here. Mm-hmm. And that's because, I mean, I've been in crypto for years. Well, several years anyways. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And and it's a pain in the ass for me. I got to move stuff over using MetaMask and put it in my Binance account. Oh, no, mm-hmm. it goes here. Blockchain account. Oh, no. Oh, there's a me- minimum limit for my withdrawal. I'm like, yeah. Fuck me. You yeah. know, I'm not. It's just... It, it'll come. It'll come. Yeah, we spoke about performance and uh, and also personalization, right? Well, yeah. There's you know product processing. Personalization is something I'm really really keen on because it's it, it creates a better experience. It reduces churn. It increases your conversion because you're talking about things that people care about. You yeah. Know? So. Yeah. Say I'm a horse racing guy. I happen to love British horse racing. My father-in-law got me into it years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't follow it that closely anymore, but you know, I mean, back in the day, I was on it. You know, mm-hmm. and then people say, I, 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 so I go to you know, uh, I, I go to uh, 888 Sports, or I go to you know, Mansion and pick your sports. Sport, or I go to Betfair, mm-hmm. and it's like, oh, it's all about man, man, man. You v Liverpool. Well, I don't really follow this. You know, why are you? Why are you sending me emails about Man U v Liverpool? Yeah. I know it's a big match, and good luck to them. And but I don't care who wins, and mm-hmm. and I don't know anything about it. Sports betting is largely driven by the the, the, the supposed knowledge of the punter. Mm-hmm. You know, I know something about sport about horse racing because I've been studying the form. I, mean, I know the jockeys, I know the trainers. You know, I, I give a shit about it. Mm-hmm. Um, so you know, so talk to me about horse racing, yeah. right? And not just on the Grand National, not just during Cheltenham. You know, talk to me about you know about stuff that I care about, stuff yeah. that I've been on. But, but Duh. Exactly. Yeah. But personalization have been, you know, the the hot potato in the industry for years now. I mean, how, how you know everyone is speaking about it, have been speaking about it for, for, for many years now. What what if you if you had to give uh, uh, the industry a score from one to ten, ten being, you know, complete fantastic personalization, what how do we rank now after years like, of talking like about one? it? One zero okay, one. Wow. We're yeah. that, we're that I mean, it's getting there. It's getting there. Yeah. Um. And and it, and it will over the next couple of years. Mm-hmm. Um. I game industry much much Lee Nissim, brilliant guy, brilliant guy. Um. But he and I are opposite. You know, opposite ends of the spectrum. He thinks we've got a massively in- innovative industry. I think we've got a massively slow adopter. Mm-hmm. You know, we're laggards when it comes to adopting stuff. Mm-hmm. Porn industries adopt things really quickly and mm-hmm. figure out things really quickly. Mm-hmm. But. Uh, 
And on the other end of the spectrum, it's iGaming. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are slow. We are traditionalists. We are old school bookies. I know. Why, school, why, school, why, do you, why do you think that is, Alex? That's so, that's so weird to me. Like, why are we so slow? We're supposed to be the, you know, the frontline uh, tech pioneers of, uh, uh, of the internet kind of thing. But, but I, I tend to agree with you. We're, we're, you know, we're in gambling, but we don't really gamble very much ourselves in terms of putting out innovations and, and sort of daring, being bold and just putting it out there and seeing what happens. Uh, why, why do you think... Much fucking money. Yeah. Is, that, is that it? Are we, Go ask Miss Coates. Go ask Miss Coates. Yeah. Hey, do you care about personalization? Yeah. Well, I, let's see. I made $360 million myself personally this year. Yeah. No. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No. No. Oh, what? I'm going to make another $40 million? You know, what? Whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I mean, part of it, you know, and, and, you know, stuff that's happening in China, they... They, they come in on Monday morning and sweep the cash off the floor because, <laughs> you know, it just comes in. Um, and so we, we get, we have, we can, we can go out there with shitty products. We can go out there inadequately, but the, but the game is getting raised all the time now. And, and people have other places to go, other things to do. But if we and compare so, to, you know, if we compare, we've got, to, we've got to raise our game. I agree, but if we compare to adult, for example, or or any other industry, isn't it the same? Are they also not just you know shoveling cash off the floor to some to some extent, or or do you think? It, I mean, you know, I think we can compare ourselves to other industries that are equally as you know uh, fat and happy, if you will, by way of of uh, of the financial side of things, but still we're you know, slow. Like I guess we're, saying we're, to we're, we're, we're also, we're very often locked into old legacy systems. Yeah. So, you know, you're, you're on, you're on Playtech and it's a great platform. I've used it. I made millions of dollars on mm-hmm. it. Not mm-hmm. personally, but mm-hmm. you know, for my companies mm-hmm. and, um, you know, uh, but, but man, it's still spaghetti code from 1997. Yeah. And until they come out with Playtech 2.0, which yeah. maybe, uh, 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 when, um, Novomatic, Novomatic, it's Novomatic. yeah. Mm. Buys them. Um, no, uh, no, 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 no. Aristocrat, I think, right? it's, yes, it is. Thank you, aristocrat. <laughs> yeah, I think of those guys, you know, so much. They're they're big land based guys. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, synonymous for me. Thank you for that. Yeah. Um, and 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 we're and we're increasingly old guys. You know, exactly. twenty years in the industry, um, and you know, you see that in, across the board that you know the uh, the sea level guys. You know, and it's like. Oh yeah, okay. You know, yeah, I've seen this, seen this. Yeah, sure. This is the next big thing. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Um, so there's a reluctance to uh, to adopt new technologies, yeah. and yeah. also, you know, our player base is actually aging as well. Mm. You know, the average in the North America, your average uh, slots player is 50 years old now. Yeah, it's significantly um, yeah. older yeah. than than Europe, is it not? I, I guess the I guess the the land based the uh, database by general uh, in general is is uh, you know older than the pure sort of online European database. Uh, I mean that, that well, must be the, the, where it's coming. Know, players from. in North America are definitely it's a very mature market. Yeah. You know, it's it's where online gaming has its roots. Um, although they actually come out of South Africa and Israel and mm. Scandinavia, but. But yeah, um, it's you know it's where online gaming made the most money quickly. Yeah, and because uh, Americans are rabid, rabid gamblers, mm-hmm. um, as are Australians, as are Chinese, mm-hmm. as are you know many many countries. But um, you know that's that's where it came from, and so those are the established companies, and that's how micro gaming and playtech and RTG and you know m- and most of your top top players mm-hmm. you know, made their money. That's where mm-hmm. they came from. Mm-hmm. Eighty to eight, you know that's where it, that's the reason they exist is because of the United States mm-hmm. and. <coughs> And that, and that's from 20 years ago. And, mm. and, you know, that everybody's getting old, you know, I was talking to a buddy of mine that I did the first white label of Pacific poker for back in 2003. Mm-hmm. Um, it was my first poker network launch mm-hmm. and, um, and his, you know, his kids are in college now as are mine. It's like, yeah. shit, where'd all the time go? Yeah. <laughs> but, um, time flies, yeah. time yeah. flies. Okay. So personalization. So what do you think is, um, like what is missing today? What, what what do operators need to focus on uh, in order to get personalization right? And and you know, so how do you how do you nail it? How do you how do you do a good well, job? There, in this there, 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 are, there are tools out there now, you know, fast track, simplify that it, you know gives you real time data driven uh, comms, mm-hmm. uh, which are brilliant. You know, mm-hmm. that's and and they're you know I, they're they it takes time to implement them, it takes time to figure them out. You know, mm-hmm. but but at least you know you're getting down to one to one communications with your players, mm-hmm. which is what's vital. Yeah, and um, and so they're they're so worth the investment to have somebody, 
you know, somebody um, virtually looking at your player uh, every time, uh, the entire time they're on. Mm -hmm. And like they have a bust out, bang, you flag it, mm -hmm. they get a message. Wow, that sucked. You played, you lost a hundred bucks in five minutes. That was your whole other deposit. Mm -hmm. Here's a hundred, here's a hundred bucks back with a 20 time wager requirement. Go back in. And this time, don't play that game, play this game. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's, you know, that's what people need mm -hmm. is that kind of guidance and mm -hmm. onboarding. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, stuff like uh, Now Bet Now uh, is a really interesting technology for automating personalization on an external basis as well as on your site. Mm -hmm. Stuff like Frosmo gives you a personalized casino mm -hmm. lobby because casino players go back to the same games all the time. Mm -hmm. They'll try new games, they'll try different games, but they go back to the same game all the time because, as I do, mm -hmm. because that's where you're going to win. You yeah. know? And so, why are those games on top? Oh, if I click favorite and go to my favorites, I can see. Yeah, but no, you know, they just, you should know. Yeah, okay? yeah. When I go on Amazon, I see all the high heels and stilettos because that's what I like to buy. Mm. I'm not. Mm. But you know what I mean? <laughs> it, it remembers who I am. Yeah, yeah. And too yeah. much. So, in fact, yeah. I don't want to ever buy another Hannah Montana CD. <laughs> my daughter's grown up. Yeah. It's over. It's over. Don't show me that shit anymore, Amazon. <laughs> so but, um, hey. Okay. <laughs> All right. So a lot to learn for the industry. So it sounds like the tools are starting to be there, right? I mean, it's more about taking the plunge, integrating them, doubling down on it, and uh, and again being bold and being being well and giving a shit about it, you know? Yeah. Because yeah. if you're making so much money and you don't, you know, it's like whatever. But mm -hmm. you no, know, people need a positive experience, and personalization makes that experience way, way more positive. Yeah. Because you're feeding them stuff that they actually will care about. Yeah. And of course, to feed them stuff that they actually care about, you have to understand what they're eating in the first place. Mm -hmm. So if you don't understand the difference between um, uh, uh, a 96.6 .6 RTP game that's got a high volatility versus uh, you know a 98% uh, RTP game that's got a low volatility like Kitty Cash, mm -hmm. I mean, if you don't understand the difference of that, mm -hmm. how are you going to know what to feed them? Yeah. How but are you going to... It's like... It's like I, I'm a red wine guy, right? Mm. And you, and the sommelier comes up to me and says, "Oh, well, have you tried this?" I'm like, "Well, I'm a red wine guy. You know, it's a white wine." And it's yeah. like, "Well, I'm a red wine guy, so um, unless it's kick ass, mm -hmm. which it can be, and mm -hmm. there are some, mm -hmm. I mean, like you know, you're talking to the wrong audience, and just like the horse racing football thing, you yeah. know, I'm I'm a I'm a huge. I spend whatever I you know." whatever it is on, on, on horse racing, I spend all this money on horse racing. And then you want me to spend money on football? Well, yeah, fair play for trying to cross sell me, mm. but I don't know anything about football and I don't give a fuck about it. I'm not going to watch the game. Yeah. You know, I'm busy watching horse racing for fuck's sake. So, 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 so it, do you, do you, yeah, do, I don't so understand. Do you, uh, that's what personalization eliminates is that stupidity in marketing. Yeah. So do you think, but that stupidity, do you, do you think that links back to what we, where we started? You have to eat your own cookies, so to speak. And, and whoever is in charge of product personalization, et cetera, et cetera, might not be eating their own cookies. So, so they are not educated enough in terms of RTP exactly, volatility exactly, levels. Exactly. And yeah. therefore by yeah, default, just because I like, yeah. But by default, you can't personalize something that you don't understand in detail, right? Exactly, yeah. exactly. You know, just because I like King of Raw doesn't mean I like Book of Thrones, and you know, and and it's and and, and they're both Egyptian games, so you yeah. should like them, Alex. Yeah. And then they'll go to the next step. Oh well, they're both you know high volatility games, so you should like them. Yeah, but this one's got you know two hundred forty three ways to pay, which I don't like, and this one's got. 10 ways to pay and 90% of the games I play have got 10 to 25 ways to pay. Yeah. So why are you showing me a game with 243? Yeah. Or why are you trying to shove a mega ways down game down my throat? Yeah. Those games never pay for me yeah. with one exception, break the bank. Yeah. <coughs> but break the bank again by micro gaming. But, um, <coughs> yeah, I can't get mega Ways game to pay for me yeah. except for break the bank again, mega ways. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so much, but, so much yeah, now, now, Fresno fast track, personalization but yeah the data the information behind that and of course a lot of people go in they oh, well with ai machine learning yeah but if your machine learning is learning from people making mistakes you're gonna have dumb machine learning yeah dumb motherfucker yeah you know so if you got if you're driving your players away because you're sending them to the wrong games then uh then then the ai is gonna say hey well put this in front of these guys you know and like no you know that collaborative filtering yeah. Because because you played you know uh, uh, empty the bank but prime max play you might like diamond heist and actually in that case it's actually true mm. um, but if you know if you like empty the bank by prime max play mm -hmm. you might like heist mm -hmm. by micro gaming mm -hmm. um, micro you know uh, empty the bank is a 20, July twenty twenty one release with a really great feature voiceover the English accent 
It's got a fantastic feature with multipliers in it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, you get your bonuses on a reasonable basis. Heist is from 1998, maybe 2004. I'm sorry about gaming. I can't remember. Um, And it's, and it's impossible to get free spins on it. It's impossible. It doesn't have the features. Is it? No, it's like, no, man, Mm -hmm. they're both robbing bank, robbing games. And I like robbing banks virtually on my slot games for sure. My favorite, my three favorite games are robbing banks. Yeah. But, um, but but they're not the same. You gotta you gotta know you gotta know what you're selling. Yeah, and maybe it's more you know it's too shallow of personalization today. And you really need to go really deep and have a lot of layers, a lot of tags on each on each slot title in order to be able to serve that in in a, in, a, in a good way, basically. To the exactly yeah. exactly exactly. <laughs> okay, uh, so, so yeah. that's that, so Fourth, that was. I'll run. I'll give you the last two. Yeah. Fourth P is presentation. Yeah, which is all about you know video, video, video. Eighty-two yeah. percent of uh, bandwidth. Cisco will tell you eighty-two percent of bandwidth in twenty twenty-two will be video. That's because video's fat, man. Yeah. Text is this. Of course, video is eighty-two yeah. percent. Doesn't mean that eighty-two percent of the people are watching videos. For fuck's sake, but uh, but video is huge. TikTok is huge. You see the numbers. Um, video, you know, yeah. we're we're moving into idiocracy, which is a movie you should watch. Uh, you know, people are getting dumber and dumber. Yeah. They don't want to read. They can't read. Yeah. You know, they can't write. They don't teach cursive in school anymore. It, it's we're, we're doomed. But um, but video is is key. It's fun, and mm. and you're watching video on this right now, yeah. most likely. <laughs> exactly. Yeah? Unless you're listening to it while you're jogging, in which case don't trip. <laughs> but um, but presentation is cool, and I think live streaming is really important um, because you see somebody eating the product. You see someone playing. It's like you know. This is a good game. Yeah. And he lost or he won, but he had fun. Yeah. And I'm gonna go have fun. Yeah. I'm gonna play that. And I see that all the time with my with with my viewers. They say, Oh, I can't wait to go try this game. I can't wait to try this game. Or I'm never gonna play this game because yeah. it just sucks because I show shitty games too. Yeah. So that presentation is my fourth P. But the most important P of them all, after Michael Peterson, <laughs> um, has gotta be, has gotta be have a plan B. Because things are not going to go your way. Yeah. I, I launched uh, Sight in Thailand in July of 2000 and, no, sorry, 20, 2020. It's actually recent history. And, um, and COVID hit. Mm. And, and Thailand's GDP decreased by 20%. Wow. So that means, sure, the tour guides aren't getting paid. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they're not playing. But it's not the tour guides I'm worried about. Um, the tour guides aren't getting their suits dry cleaned because they don't have anywhere to go out and see. Mm. So the dry cleaning guy's not getting paid. And so the dry cleaning guy's not getting paid. So that means he's not going out to eat his noodles on a, on a daily basis at his noodle shop. Mm-hmm. So the noodle guy's not getting paid. Mm-hmm. And the noodle guy's my guy. Mm-hmm. You know, he's the guy who was making tons of money. And, um, and he has no money because, because of all these, all this knock on effect. Yeah. So, and no one saw it coming. Nobody saw it coming. Maybe not Stradamus. But um, you've got to always have a plan. B. jurisdictions will change. The licensing regulations will change. The, the, in Germany, I, you know, all these guys are pulling out of Germany because it's like, fuck, we can't make any money here. Yeah. And more importantly, we can't satisfy our players here. Therefore, we can't make any money. Mm-hmm. Um, that's what's happening with the with these stupid regulations that are done to protect players, yeah. but actually just push the players off into foreign jurisdictions where no one has any control and nobody benefits except for the operator and hopefully. Hopefully the player, because there are some, you know, black label, gray label guys that uh, that actually give a shit about players and want to keep them, you know, for the rest of their lives. Mm. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Pu- pushing them to to black markets and un- unfortunately also giving just a a, a a worse player experience, right? Because what is the response going to be to high taxation, lowering the RTP, and and that's what exactly, we're seeing. Yeah, right? exactly, so, yeah. so you know, or, the- or yeah, in sports betting, I'm like. Cool. I'll go up against regulated guys anytime because I'll do better bonuses. I'll do better odds. I'll do better. Yeah. Yeah. You know, all the, all the way across the board. Yeah. So always have a plan B. That's always a, have a plan B. That's cool. It's, it's, it's rule number four of my 10 rules of, <laughs> of, of life, of marketing that uh, you can find on LinkedIn. Just look for me. All right. Good, good, good stuff. But let's, uh, let, let's pick out the, so you spoke about personalization and, and live streaming in, in, in the fourth P. Uh, let, let's pick out, uh, that, that topic a little bit more and talk a little bit about that, that in depth, if, if you don't mind, uh, Alex. So, so you're now doing streaming, uh, streaming yourself, uh, superstarplayers.com and superstar players live on Twitch. Um, and Facebook and YouTube and, and, and Trovo soon, yeah. And and everywhere else. But 
it, you know, you you have a, you literally have a, a background in, in in video, if you will. I mean, you have been an early believer in video and everything live, and you, you spoke about boss lock before and and everything. Yeah. Uh, like, if you had to look at the past and project, sort of, you know, whatever one, two, three, five years into the future, how do you think this is going to play out? Like, what is going to happen to uh, affiliate streamers on Twitch? Uh, is it going to be a new platform only for game gaming? Is, is you know, do 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 the end consumers will they still continue accelerating towards, uh, you know, in iGaming it's Twitch, but if I look at my six year old daughter, she does not want to look look at the TV. She only wants to watch YouTube with other people playing instead of playing herself. You know, you, you know the spiel. Yeah, yeah. Is is that going to continue being like that or? Or will we get fed up of uh, streaming and go back to cinemas uh, in the near future? <laughs> what, what do you think is the future looks like with, for video, Alex? Well, I, you know, I don't think we're, I, you know, the cinema is a great experience. It's great fun, and, but it's a huge gamble. Yeah. And I, this is what I say to my players, you know, gamble responsibly, take money that you can afford to lose. And if you want to go watch Batman v Superman or Jungle Cruise, you know, and you bring your family and it's 20 quid each to get in in London and, and it's 20 quid for popcorn. It's 20 quid for a cup of Coke and mm -hmm. 20 quid for a serviette. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it just, it adds up, you know? Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. you can go and play, play that money instead of gambling on, uh, gambling on, on going to the cinema. Mm -hmm. um, but for a great film, you know, it's, I, I went and saw Matrix Resurrections at the cinema. Um, I didn't demand my money back, uh, but it was, you know, it mm -hmm. was okay. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad I saw it at the cinema. You know, so, um, but yeah, there's, there's, there's no question, especially as we move towards a more idiocratic future, um, if people ability to read will decline. People can't write cursive anymore. People consume video, consume video. You know, I mean, I still read my news and I read my news. I prefer to read the news mm. than listen to it. Mm -hmm. Um, but even now I find myself, I'm watching it more and more and more and more. I just, I just, okay. Yeah. Show, show me, show me, tell me. And, um, it's, you know, things are getting tighter and more concise and everything is turning into a TikTok video. Give me the story in 30 seconds. Okay. Yeah. Great. You yeah. Know? Um, but then, um, you know, when I go, when I go deeper, I'd rather read it, uh, than, than, than view it. Um, mm. but in terms of, you know, people streaming, like, like, like I'm doing, uh, for me, it's been a, you know, a great learning curve. It's been interesting. I'm learning this new technology, uh, the new way of doing it. I mean, I paid $20,000 for a box that would encode my video to, to go into flash back in 2008. And now my phone does it, you know, <laughs> it's, it's the same thing. And boy, that hurts. But, um, you yeah, have to pay you know, your dues, so uh, you have to pay your dues, Alex. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. In, uh, you remember the Wally, -E, that movie Wally, -E, and they show these people on the spaceship and they're all talking, chatting to each other. Yeah. They're not going to chat to each other using typewriting. They're going to, they're going to video each other. Yeah. You know, it's, 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 it's inevitable. That's why we're talking over video now, right? Yeah. You yeah. could be doing this via chat like we used to in the old days. Yeah. But no, no, we're on video. Um, and it's just more and more and more. So, but I think what you're going to see happen is that, um, brands will take more control of their, of their video streams. And, and the third, and, the, and these, the, you know, these guys like Rushdeen and, uh, well, some of them are really dodgy, but some of them are actually okay. Mm -hmm. But, um, like me, but, um, what you, what, what you're going to see is that, you know, brands will incorporate more video into their, into their sites as like, Oh, you want to, you want to find out about this game? Watch this video, two minute video, one minute video. Here's like what the feature looks like. Here's how you play it. Bang, bang, bang. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll play that game. That's mm -hmm. cool. Mm -hmm. They don't have to go and see it somewhere else. So, you know, the, the shift is going to go away from the pioneers, you know, the early guys mm -hmm. to do the live streaming and shift back to brands that have budgets and can get Brooke Burke or, 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 or uh, Kardashians, you know, in front of the camera and mm -hmm. talking about their stuff. Mm -hmm. And, um, and that's what's driving the, the live commerce right now. Yeah. When people talk about billions and billions of dollars sold in China, like overnight, um, a huge, huge part of that is celebrity drive driven live streaming, um, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Social yeah. commerce or, love, or live Joe, commerce Joe or, whatever Chong or whoever. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And if he says buy my Armani makeup, all the girls go out and buy his Armani makeup and, and yeah. it sells out in minutes. Yeah. Um, so it's less about the technology and more about the personality. Mm. Um, and, uh, and that's a good thing if you have one. 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. But, but all um, all the all these services, right? So so we we watch that very carefully as well. The so, the sort of social shopping phenomenon in in Asia now spreading to to the US, UK, and and, and the West overall in general. Um, but you know, as we increase streaming, as we increase video, as we increase social shopping or live streaming video. Um, you know, all of that relies on creators and people who, you know, are willing to stream, are good at streaming, can entertain through streaming. Do, do you think, you know, the, the, let's say the pool of streamers, the pool of creators will, will accelerate at the same rate or will this become a, a scarcity resource and, and, uh, you know, people will start battling, uh, you know, who has the best streamer, like football players almost and doing, doing contracts with, with, with the, with the top performing guys. H how will that play out sort of the human resource inside live streaming over the next five years? I remember back in the 1980s or 1990s, um, Intel was saying, Intel, the chip maker, mm -hmm. um, was saying, oh, you know, we need 2 million uh, hardware engineers by the year 1995 or we're fucked. And, um, and of course, that's not the case because when there's a problem, technology arises and, and we find a solution. And they came up with electronic design automation and tools were developed that, that made the, the development of, of chip processing so much easier, so much faster that, you know, now five guys can do the job of 50,000. You know, you, no, you don't need all those. And, um, and the same thing will happen with AI, you know, 10 years from now, you won't talk to me, you'll talk to my avatar, mm -hmm. and he'll be just as smart and clever. Um, and uh, I'm not like his lip as often. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, he'll, he'll probably be a better guest, you yeah, know, yeah. say less offensive things. But um, okay, so technology yeah, so will, will, will technology, solve it. You know, yeah. And also, you've got this whole generation of people except in Japan where everybody's getting old. Uh, but you got other way, you know, in, in many, many, in, in many multiple markets. I mean, don't even talk to me about Africa where half the people under, in Africa are under the year, age of 25. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about what, 1.5 billion people, mm -hmm. population same size as uh, China or mm -hmm. India, mm -hmm. massively disparate, still tribal, mm -hmm. still have all kinds of, you know, issues, but somebody will pull their shit together. And, mm -hmm. and yeah, all those people are growing up, devouring video, loving video and participating in video, mm -hmm. you know, few TikTok and other user generated content stuff. Yeah. Um, so they're, they'll become more experienced and more comfortable in front of the camera. I mean, I wasn't, you know, I'm, I'm fairly comfortable in camera. I've been acting since I was in high school, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, doing a web stream, you're sitting here by yourself talking to the camera and trying to make it fun and personal. Yeah. I mean, it took me 300 hours to get, to get uh, to get comfortable. Yeah, Malcolm Glazer will tell you ten thousand hours. So, you know, <laughs> give me give me thirty more years. We'll see what happens. For, for sure. <laughs> okay. All right. So uh, the the influx of creators and streamers will will only continue going going up. Then I mean, I think so. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, that won't be a scarcity. Okay. Cool. Um, uh, okay. So this and if there is a scarcity, technology will make up for it. Yeah. All right, cool. So I also want your uh, absolute brutally honest opinion. So my day job, apart from doing podcasts, is obviously uh, driving livespins.com commercially. Uh, I don't know if you've had a chance to look at the product, but effectively what we're solving is instead of passively looking at an affiliate streamer, you can now bet behind and sort of join the join the ride of, of an affiliate streamer. So your brutal first opinion, first uh, thought around that that sort of product. Do you think? What do you think about it? And how do you think that will play out over the in the future? I, you know, I think it's fucking brilliant um, because you know I went to Foxwoods when it first opened in Connecticut, and um, and and you couldn't get a seat at the blackjack table, mm -hmm. so I drove two hours or whatever from New Jersey, uh, you know, up uh, up through upstate New York or uh, in, through in Connecticut, you know, yeah, <laughs> to get to Foxwoods, <coughs> and. Um, and I couldn't get at a table. I mean, I came to play blackjack. I couldn't get at a table. Oh, but I could watch these players. And I could see the players that played Masamanos like I do. And I could stand behind them. And on this, there's three spots on the table. So he has his spot. And he makes the decisions. And I can't influence him much. You know, hit, hit, hit. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, I can't technically influence him. Yeah. Um, but I can bet behind him. So if I see someone that's playing pretty much by the book, and not being stupid, mm -hmm. then uh, then I can bet behind them. And I think that's a great way to bring people into uh, the iGaming space. You know, you get the rush. You don't have to make the decisions. Mm -hmm. It's part of the idiocracy again. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you, you don't have to think about it. You just, oh, find the smart guy and bet on him. I mean, that's how I do sports betting. I, I find the smart guy and 
Yeah, just follow him. Yeah, because he gives a fuck. He pays attention. He knows the data. He knows. He yeah. knows that you know the guys are in Miami, and every time the guys from from Minnesota go to Miami, they get hammered at this club, and they can't perform the next day, and that's why their record in Miami sucks. He knows all this stuff. Yeah. I don't know any of it. So I like. I want to bet behind him, and uh, bet behind me playing blackjack is is not a sure thing, but it's it's probably better than playing by yourself if you don't know. If you don't know anything about how to play, yeah, um, bet playing shithead behind my daughter is going to be way better than you playing shithead against her. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, I, I I think it's a great model. I think it's a great model, and um, I I don't know how much it'll scale. Yeah. is the thing. Yeah, uh, but I think it's a great model. Okay, cool. And just for transparency, there was no uh, payment to to Alex to to say those words. No, 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 no. I I, <laughs> I, I, I use your shit on my next site if I could. Yeah, okay. So I think it's a great model. All right, fantastic. How how do you think um, like the um, sort of the uh, the affiliate streaming model? Like you're you're doing it yourself, right? Your your own your own uh, your own channel, um, and I think you're doing a terrific job on that. Uh, by the way, uh, you see, I didn't pay him for that either, guys. No, exactly. Full full transparency here. No no uh, no money has been uh, changing hands to 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 praise each other today, um, but um, but. There is a lot of controversy around uh, affiliate streaming on Twitch, and you, you, there are a lot of guys out there who 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 play uh, uh, quite aggressively. Let's put it that way, and you know, sort of, it's, it's kind of like the cowboys and Indians uh, from from well, the gaming yeah, industry, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. sort of 10, 15 years ago. So, it, yeah, you know, yeah. what what do you think will will happen, uh, you know, in the future? If you had to give your your best guess, do you think, for example, Twitch? Will disallow gambling one day, or do you well, think they've already disallowed links? They dis um, disallowed links, right? Sites, yeah. yeah, but for so, example, would they remove the slots category entirely and not allow it yeah. in the future? Yeah. Uh, or do you think uh, regulators uh, from regulated markets will step in and somehow put requirements on on providers and operators that will you know <laughs> make make well, it make I, it more I, sustainable? I don't know if the regulators would, would get that far. To the what they do is they make the advertising channels uninteresting because you can't monetize the players that come in, mm -hmm. so they don't have to actually go after, um, you know, Google or I mean, I got thrown off of YouTube advertising for life because I tried to advertise superstar players live. I'm like, dude, I'm gambling in a regulated environment. I'm over 18. Mm -hmm. I'm not. I'm. I'm. I'm not. I'm, I'm not. I'm riding a skateboard, drinking a drinking a fresca mm -hmm. or whatever mm -hmm. he's drinking. Mm -hmm. You know, um, probably wasn't fresca. <laughs> Must have been tab. Um, but, uh, but yeah, you know, I'm, I'm not doing anything remotely illegal and mm -hmm. I can't drive players to my channel because Google says so. Yeah. And in fact, I can't drive players to anywhere anymore on Google mm -hmm. or YouTube, mm -hmm. uh, because they cut me off for life because mm -hmm. I wanted to drive them to my show. I'm like, yeah. that's just wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, regulators, they get it wrong more times than they get it right. Yeah. I think their hearts are in the right place, but. Yeah, they just they, they don't understand how the ecosystem really works. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you know they're not going to have to regulate it out of existence. Um, the uh, they'll, they'll do that by fucking the operators up enough that it just doesn't pay to do those things. Mm -hmm. I, the, the guys that are making all the money in 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 on YouTube right now that you know, and and Twitch right now are doing it for American players going to black market sites mm -hmm. like Stick dot com. Mm -hmm. It's not it's not it's not it's not a legal site. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's Curso license. Maybe. But <clears throat> yeah, I mean, they're, they're talking to U.S. players, and it's a great market. And um, but you know, should they are they going to go after Twitch? Yeah, um, um, maybe. Um, or, twi or Twitch will I, I disallow really it, it, it. Disallow themselves, so to speak, just to stay out of uh, potential trouble because exactly. the, the gambling exactly. industry is such a small, small, such a small piece of their revenue. So uh, you know that could potentially happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People, the the UBOs really respond to heat from regulators. It's like, you know, I see you guys are doing this, and maybe you shouldn't. And it's like, yeah, okay, that's gone. Yeah. I mean, I used to think we spent a lot of money on Google when I was doing white label stuff for Gala Bingo and Gala Casino, and I spent in a million pounds a month. Mm -hmm. I'm like, wow, you know, I'm, that should be something. And uh, and my Google rep just shook his head at me and said, dude, you don't spend anything on Google. Yeah, I have one keyword in travel that. Is, is what your entire budget is yeah. per month. Yeah. One keyword. Yeah. Never mind your 50 keywords, whatever. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. The um, But I think the whole affiliate thing is going to change. There's 
they, you know, I think everybody can become an affiliate and, uh, and we'll see how this plays out. I mean, everybody's been trying member, get member, refer a friend, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and it's, it's really been problematic, um, you know, tracking it. And, but, you know, but that technology is changing very easily, you know, with tagging mm -hmm. and things. Mm -hmm. So now we can, you know, Michael, if you want to be an affiliate for, you know, one of my casinos or for my show, um, yeah, all you have to do is add your, the secret ID number on your link, put your link in your social media. And off you go. Mm. Um, you know, you don't have to load banners. You don't have to write pages. You don't mm. have to do reviews. Mm -hmm. um, you and 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 that's and and that's and your site, uh, your reference, your reference to that one person is probably going to be way more effective than say Casino.org, which is a great great site, great guys, super smart, making millions and millions and millions every month. Um, and uh, and fair play to them because they've done a great job on their CEO mm -hmm. uh, SEO and 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 and, and good content, mm -hmm. um, you know, and they're smart guys. But um, but I'd rather hear if 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 Michael Peterson, you know, my Facebook buddy or my LinkedIn buddy says, dude, you should check out, you know, Blah Blah Casino. Um, they've got they've got some new games that are mm -hmm. really cool. I'm not seeing them anywhere else. Check it out. Click yeah. the link. Boom, you get credit for twenty percent of my losses. You win, I win. No, mm. you know, it's a win, win, win. Yeah. And that, because a social, a personal reference is worth a hundred times more than a third party reference. Yeah. And a third party reference is worth a hundred times more than me saying, yeah, I'm great. Come see me mm. or come play with me. Mm. So third party references are still important. Affiliates will still exist. Mm -hmm. The CEO will continue to make money until we die. Yeah. No question about it. Yeah. Um, you know, well, I mean, so long as we have an internet. <laughs> um, but in China and Russia might see the end of that, but, um, but the personal recommendation is, is key. And, um, and if, and you've got a link there, it's just like, I mean, where do the affiliates come from in the first place? You know, Jeff Bezos, if I'm not mistaken, trolls, bring it on. Mm. Uh, Jeff Bezos basically invented affiliate systems with the Amazon referral system back in 1998 mm -hmm. and, um, or 97 around there. And if you remember back then, then you weren't really there, yeah. but, um, the, uh, that's where, that's where the whole affiliate tracking thing came from. And so do I feel bad if I track, if I, if I decide to buy a book, you know, because Mike Peterson recommended it and I know you're going to get mm. a, 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 a raise a thin slice of it, mm -hmm. probably more than the author gets. Mm -hmm. Um, no, I don't, you know, no, I don't care. I just yeah. want the book and yeah. I pay the same price for it. Yeah. And just like I'm going to go to the casino, I'm going to get my bonuses and I'm going to play. Oh, and Michael's making a few bob on the side. Well, mm -hmm. cool. I'll make him buy beers next time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No worries. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Let's, uh, let's start rounding off, uh, Alex. It's been, uh, it's been an hour, uh, and I still have uh, a lightning round uh, to do with you. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> in terms of, uh, five P's and live streaming, are there any sort of concluding comments from your side or anything you want to, you want to highlight or mention? Product processing. Don't leave home without them. Yeah. You want to? Preparation using video, you know, that's how you talk to people and that's going to make a difference in your conversions and plan B have a plan B because things will not go your way. Uh, I think they're, I think they're a good five P's. Yeah. They probably won't be teaching them in at MBA school in 2030, but uh, I think they're important five P's for now. Yeah. And six P is speak to Michael Peterson. <laughs> uh, exactly. <laughs> Fantastic. Good. All right. Thank you so much, Alex. Let's jump into the lightning round. So, lightning round is uh, is basically just a fun little gimmick to get to uh, get to know you a little bit better. And um, so, it's a uh, it's ten super fast questions. You get like you know one second to answer each of them. So, just whatever pops to your mind, the first thing that comes out is is good enough and, and a good answer. All right. You ready for it? I need more wine. <laughs> <But yes. laughs> okay, good. Let's go. Metaverse. Metaverse. Well, I've been doing the metaverse for 20 years. So yeah, what's new? And, and actually even the, you know, uh, multiplayer user dungeon. Yeah, of course it's coming. Facebook will not own it. Um, don't buy real estate. That's stupid. Okay, good. Next NFT. NFTs. Yeah, no fucking thing there. Um, but there could be. And people are stupid at the end of the day. They'll buy anything. You've seen people buying Beeple stuff for 1.6 million or whatever. Like, okay, hey, man, if you can sell it, God bless you. Uh, I don't get it, but it doesn't mean that there's not a market there. Cool. What's your superpower, Alex? What's my, um, my passion for my players? Cool. What's your favorite number, if you had to pick a number? 
23. Uh, blockchain? Blockchain is fantastic technology and, and that's enabling the distribution into, um, into uh, trustless networks, of course, but also the, the, the uh, blockchain does also enables the, uh, the distribution of assets. So when you talk about security for a file, here's my personal information. Right. And I'm going to keep it on the server. Well, mm-hmm. anyone can get it on the server. Mm-hmm. Oh, but wait a minute. What if I take that and put one letter of that personal information and I have that on server A and I have the second letter on server B and this on blah, 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 and I'm the one with the key that can bring it all back together. So nobody can take that one bit of data mm-hmm. and, and, and you can knock yourself out with it. Mm-hmm. But only if you have the key can you put it all back together. That's decentralization and blockchain is massively essential to enabling that. It's not, it's not vital, but it, it, it facilitates it enormously. Mm-hmm. And the technology behind blockchain is facilitating decentralization enormously. So uh, blockchain is technology definitely to watch and decentralization is the future of computing. Cool. Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan. <laughs> I, isn't that an American question? <laughs> Joe Rogan. You know, I, I, the American civil liberties, li- 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 speaking, li- yeah, I need more wine. The American Civil Liberties Union used to say that, you know, I hate what you're saying, but I'll defend to my life your right to say it. And I like that position. You know, I think people can say bad, stupid things and I can look at them and say, no, you're a bad, stupid person, you know, but, but God, you know, under the American constitution, you have the right to say bad, stupid things. I mean, look at Trump, everything that comes out of his mouth is a bad, stupid thing, almost without fail. Like, <laughs> yeah, almost. Um, I mean, he tells his kids, I love you. And that's probably true. Uh, other than that, psh, you know, you can't believe a fucking word out of his mouth. Um, does he have the right to say these things? Of course he has the right to say these things. You know, it's a free country. You can say whatever you want, which is what I don't. Then we get into political correctness. And it's like, oh, you can't say that. You can't say that. You can't say that. I'm like, dude, it's a free country. I can say whatever I want. Yeah. You know, you are you are prohibited from shouting fire in a crowded theater. And you should be prohibited from spreading misinformation, uh, you know, without a disclaimer uh, over a broadcast system like the Internet. You know, there should be some sort of restraint or, you know, this is. Just, you know, a banner across the bottom, mm. like, just like I should be allowed to smoke as many cigarettes as I want. And you put the banner across the bottom and says, dude, you're going to die from cancer and you're going to have a really expensive bill and the country's not going to pay for it. You're paying for it. Okay. Thanks for a reminder. Have another. <laughs> it's my choice. It's yeah. my choice to say stupid things about COVID. It's my choice to have stupid people on or smart people that have a p- opinion that's different from me, which yeah. is his position. Yeah. Um, Okay, Alex. Uh, yeah, I mean, the world's got to be open for debate. You know, I mean, so you know, my father. <laughs> oh, we lost. We lost. So people world. talk about the Holocaust and 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 it was all against Jews. Well, yo, my dad was there. We're not Jewish. Um, Whoopi Goldberg was just called called on that, saying, you know, hey, that was a white thing against white thing, and and everybody's up in arms, going, oh no, 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 you know, it's it's a racist thing. I'm like. Okay, okay, Alex. You know. Alex, pull it, pull it, pulling it back, pulling it back. Joe Rogan. Okay, all right. Li- okay, okay. Li- like or dislike? Likes or dislikes? Do you, not, Joe Rogan. Do you, do you like him or do you dislike him? Oh, is that the question? No, sorry. <laughs> you can cut the rest of that shit. <laughs> <laughs> Ali, cut that. <laughs> <laughs> like or dislike? I just like him. Okay. Uh, Discord. I love it. Texting or talking? Uh, you know, if the wife's in the room and I'm talking to my girlfriend, I'm texting. Um, if, she, if she's not around, then I'm certainly talking. Okay. <laughs> and last but not least, very, very innocent question. What's your favorite ice cream flavor, Alex? Uh, you know, I quite like vanilla, strawberry, yeah. Yeah. and I really like caramel vanilla. That's really good. Okay, good. <laughs> Alex, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on. Uh, thank you so much for your your uh, yeah uh, approach to things, openness to to talk about whatever topic uh, we throw at you. So uh, yeah, it's been a pleasure. Well, I hope we can I hope we can edit it down to a reasonable size and 
bleep out all my fucks and shits and dams. No, we're just gonna publish it like this, I think. Uh, but it'll it'll be good. Fun. <laughs> it'll, be, it'll be good fun, Alex. Alex, uh, to close off, is there anything uh, you want to mention? Can you know where do people uh, contact you or 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 yeah, is it LinkedIn? What what what, what you know? What do you want to say? Yeah, you can find me at LinkedIn, Alex Chikowski. Um or just type in asshole. I think I come up on the top of the list there too. Um, not sure about that. I haven't SEO'd for that. I should. Um, but yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to link in with you and talk to people about stuff. And I have opinion on stuff and a little bit of experience on some of the shit. Um, but I have to say that, you know, I, I gaming, once you get in it, it's really tough to get out because other industries, A, don't pay as well. And B, aren't as challenging. They aren't as interesting. I mean, we are in one of the most competitive industries in the world. And if you can survive in this, then like going to travel or, education or insurance i'm like it's a walk in the park um you know thriving in this industry is a testament to your abilities and fair play to you if you're if you're able to make it in this industry and um and and take care of your players take care of your players let's uh yeah. that, that's a great ending i love that alex thank you so much for your time and uh my pleasure michael hope Anytime. to catch up soon again I'm sure, I'm sure we will when I when I can pull off the wraps of my new big project. Yeah. Be, I'll do it at iGaming next first. Sounds good. Perfect. Have a great day, Alex. Thank you so much. Cheers. Bye. Bye-bye.